Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. Well I'm outside on a beautiful summer afternoon to answer one of the most popular questions I've gotten on the channel from you guys since the release of the brand new Mavic 2. And that question is, does the Mavic 2 have precision landing like the original Mavic Pro does? Now what I'd like to do is to test the two units side by side. So first, I'll put the Mavic Pro up in the air, I'll send it downfield quite a ways, I'll trigger the return to home, and I'll show you just how accurately this guy can land based on its return to home point. Then I'll do the exact same test with the Mavic 2 and we can compare the results. So stay tuned and we'll get started. This first test will help us gauge the accuracy of the precision landing on the original Mavic Pro when the return to home function has been triggered. Now what I've done to set up the test is I've set the return to home point as the takeoff point or the point of origin. So it should pretty much land exactly where it took off. I've also set the return to home height at 30 meters. Now we're in a wide open field here with very few obstructions so it's not really an issue here. But if you're flying in an area where there's a lot of tall trees or other things that you want to avoid, I always try to set that return to home height well above what those obstructions are. Now it's not like the quad's going to have a problem because it's got crash avoidance on the way back so if it sees something it'll negotiate its way around it but honestly the last thing you want to do is delay that return to home trip because remember return to home typically happens in a critical condition where batteries are low or something's gone wrong with the quad so you're going to want to get it back to the home point as quickly as possible so I always set it well above any obstructions in the area. All right so to run this test what I'm going to do is reset the home point so I've got an accurate picture of where we're at I'll spin up the rotors, I'll put it up to about 10 meters, let it settle there for a minute, and then I'll send it downfield about 100 meters. I'll sit down there for a couple of seconds, then I'll trigger the return to home and we can see what happens. My suspicion is it'll initially elevate uh, if it's at 10 meters, it'll split the difference between the return to home height and where it's sitting. So I, I think it's going to go from the 10 meters I've got it at, probably up to 20 meters, and then it'll spin back to this location. It'll finish up to the 30 meters, then it'll come back really quickly. Then I expect once it arrives over top of the home point, again, if my recollection is correct, it'll spin back to its original position. So it's kind of weird because it spins to come back. Before it lands, it actually spins into its original position and then slowly comes down. And it's constantly watching below it in addition to its GPS coordination to find that return to home point to make sure it's as accurate as possible. So let's see what happens and if I remember it correctly. So let me set the home point. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Okay, we're good to go there. We'll spin up the rotors. Take off. Take it up to about 10 meters. The home point has been updated. Just to give it a good Please look down. Check it on the map. Okay, we're right at 10 meters. So we'll let it sit there for a couple of seconds. I think we're good. All right, downfield we go. Again, I'm going to give it about 100 meters just to give it plenty of distance so we can keep it in frame and see what kind of behavior the quad exhibits when I trigger that return to home. Okay, right at about 100 meters there. Let me sit there for a second. Now it's still facing away from us at this point. Let me trigger the return to home. All right, so the first thing I'm noticing is it is elevating and it's up to the 20 meters like I suspect it. It's sitting at 20 meters. It's spinning around to face the home point. Once it's completely facing the home point, it's now elevating to the final return to home height, which is 30 meters right on the money. And it's sitting there for a second. All right, now it's coming back at a really good clip. It's really moving. So let's see what happens when it gets over top of the home point. Pretty close. All right, it's slowing down now. It's getting closer to the home point. Okay, right now it's pretty much right over the home point. It's sitting there for a second. I think it's got its bearings, yep, and it's rotating back. So it's actually going back to the original takeoff position for the quad or the orientation of the quad. And now it's starting to descend. So let's see what it makes uh, adjustment-wise on the way down. It actually looks pretty close from my eye, but it's pretty far up in the air at this point. All right, so it's coming down a little bit off to the left, and it's now moved over to the right. So it's definitely zeroing in on that landing mat. Man, that's going to be close where it sits right now. It's a little bit back. Just pulled forward a little bit. It's stopping to make those final minor adjustments, and man, oh man, is that going to be close. Yep, that's unbelievably accurate. So again, it's making some final adjustments before it makes that last bit of landing. All right, I, I can't, I'm going to take a picture of this so you can see it, 
but it is exactly where it took off. And I'll show you before and after. I mean, it's within inches. It probably could have landed on a quarter. It's just that accurate. And I think it's a combination of the GPS coordination that it's doing, which is kind of sloppy, honestly, and the visual indication of the picture it took off when it got up there to 10 meters or on the way up to 10 meters. So between those two different things, the quad is smart enough to geoposition itself using GPS. And then once it gets close to that home point, really zero in in that image to match up the image of where it took off with the image it sees when it's landing. So very, very cool. So I'll put a couple pictures up now to show you the before and after of where it took off and where it landed. In the second test, we'll see how close the Mavic 2 zoom comes to its original point of origin when I trigger the return to home function. Now again, to set this up, I've set the return to home point as the point of takeoff right there on the mat. I'm gonna bring it up to about 10 meters, let it sit there for a couple of seconds to get its bearings, send it downfield 100 meters. I'll trigger the return to home. We'll let it come back, we'll watch its behavior and see how close it comes to that point of origin. So let me set the return to home point. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. All right, all set to go. Let me spin up the props. Take off. All right, we're stable, ready to go. I'll bring it up to about the 10 meters. Has been updated. Please check it on the map. All right, that's 10 meters. Let's let it sit there a minute. All right, looks good. Downfield we go. And again, I'll take it out to about 100 meters, same distance, just to be a fair test. All right, that's about, uh, just about 100 meters. So let's trigger the return to home. Go home. All right, so what the quad's doing is immediately twisting back towards the home point. So it's now facing me, it's elevating, it's not stopping, and it's just about, yep, right at 30 meters. So it turned to me to face the original point of origin, got up to 30 meters, spun, and now it's heading back at a really good clip. Coming back very, very fast. All right, just about over the point of origin. Now it's slowing down. And it looks pretty close to right over top of the mat. Let's see what happens when it descends. All right, so it's coming down nice and slow. It's making some adjustments on the way down. Landing. All right, here she comes. Okay, just pause the second again to make another adjustment. Very slow descent, a lot slower it seems than the original Mavic Pro was but it's not doing as much pausing on the way down. All right, let's get a look at how close it's gonna be. All right, so it's off that mat by, geez, at least five feet. And it's not making any adjustments at all. It's just coming straight down. Now it knows it's in trouble. It's checking the ground underneath it to see if it's safe to land in. It is, so it's coming down. All right, so it's close, but it's not on the mat. So I would put that at about four and a half, five feet away, which again, for me, precision landing is kind of a cool parlor trick, but it's not something that I really need in a return to home situation. For me, getting the quad back in the general vicinity of where I'm standing, if there's an emergency with the quad, is really all I need it to do. So I'm completely fine and happy with it where it landed. But just to be safe, let me run the test a bunch more times and see if we get any closer to the actual mat. Nope. Nope. Come on. Close, this is close. Oh man, it's right over top. Right over top. Yes! Nope. Okay, this time I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm taking a picture before it leaves of the actual mat and I've pulled it in focus to see if that helps at all. So let me just real quick take a picture. I don't think it's gonna help, but I thought I'd try it. I gotta try every opportunity here. All right, let's send her down field. Nope. No joy. Nope. Oh man, oh man. Yes! First one ever. It's on the mat. It's not exactly where it was, but it's close enough for me. Okay, so it should be pretty obvious from that testing that the Mavic 2 does not include precision landing as part of its current firmware. 
But to be fair, if you read both manuals, the Mavic Pro and the Mavic 2, when you get to the return to home section in the Mavic Pro manual, DJI goes into great detail about precision landing, what it is, what you can expect from it. There's no mention of it at all in the Mavic 2 manual. And I think what happened was a lot of us just assumed that all the features that were in the Mavic Pro would make their way into the Mavic 2 as sort of a base level, and that wasn't the case. But again, when you're building a new quad like this, there's roadmap discussions that go on all the time around software, firmware, and features, and there isn't enough time to get everything built in there. So maybe that feature was a little bit more difficult or maybe a little less important than some of the advanced features they did build in to the initial release of that firmware. I'm pretty confident that DJI and future versions of the firmware will bake that feature back into it because all the technology they need to accomplish that is in the quad already. So just stay on top of the firmware updates. And honestly, as a feature, I always thought of it as a bit of a parlor trick where it's kind of cool that it lands on a quarter at a parking lot, but the return to home function for me is really just a matter of getting my quad that's in trouble away from me back close to me so I can recover that quad. I don't need it to actually land on my foot. I just need to land someplace close to me. This guy does that in spades. It works great and it lands really close to you if you have the return to home function. So that's pretty much it for today. I definitely wanted to get this clip up as quickly as possible to sort of explain the differences between them because a ton of you guys were asking me about it. So hopefully you found this information uh, interesting and helpful. If you have any questions about it, drop in the comments below. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I've been out flying solid for the last two weeks, so I have a ton of clips that I'm going to get up over the next couple of days, but I wanted to get them done sooner. But this guy is so amazing that I've just been out in the field burning through batteries, having a lot of fun flying it. So stay tuned to the channel. I'll have a ton more updates posting very soon. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button down there and join the Drone Valley family. We're going to have a ton more clips on a bunch of other quads and a bunch of other technologies as well. So we hope you join the family soon. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy flying. Thank you.